Hello guys, it's me Mercy, and welcome to Beansmart Productions. And today I'm going to do a review for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 that just recently ended on December 28th of 2023 last year so this season was very incredible even with its limits even with the issues in, in the production issues this season just blow me away by how great it was like i, I just gonna give just so much props to the, to, to the animators and the staff and everyone because that was incredible for this review i only gonna talk about three things the animation the voice acting and the highlights for me in this season if you want me to talk about the story and the characters in this in this arc i will do a shibuya review video talk about the shibuya arc in general so before we begin do not forget to leave a like in this video and subscribe to my channel for more one piece or Jutsu Kaisen content so without further ado Let's begin. The animation of this show was done by Studio Mappa and directed by Shota Koshonoso, the new director for this season because the previous season has Sunhu Park. And now let me tell you, I think I prefer this director over the previous one because if it looked far better, the colors were far more solid than the and the, and the weird colors that had season one. But let me tell you about animation and first let me tell you about, about what was happening in the background of the animation industry. Studio Mappa has this really, really bad rap for being a studio that really abuses their animators so much and overworks it, which everything is true. This season really highlights that issue. Because some animators that work on this season, after they were done with their episode, they will quit. They will straight up quit because of the of, of the environment and how freaking tired and annoyed they are. Like like the Mappa higher ups are really pieces of crap. Because like they need to treat their animators like freaking human beings. They cannot have the short amount of time to do this kind of work, they need time. But the thing about MAPPA is the fact that MAPPA is the, is the definition of a studio that's really trying to just raise up, up and up, and trying to do a lot of work and a lot, and, and, and a lot of content and and like push a, lo a, a, a lot of stuff. That is not good, like you need time to really do the work because if you, train their, if you don't treat the animators right, it's not gonna end well, like, like I see some of them getting just, just so worked up like they, they started slandering the fuck out of MAPPA like bro I personally feel bad for them and I hope for the future that they actually get that the treatment that they deserve because this is literally going too far like you can see it in some parts of the season how unfinished some stuff are like episode 17 like so, how unfinished some of those parts are like Episode 17 has 30% of the vision, like, completed. So, it's, it's literally like, bro, man, but now, with that aside, the animation was still incredible. The MAPPA, the MAPPA animators, the animators that work on MAPPA, they gave her their all. Yo, the animation looks so fluid, like, there's different styles, it looks fluid. And it literally is just like it blows your mind. Like it blows your mind even more than season two. For example, there's shots in this season that are literally like movie quality. For example, episode 17, even though it was unfinished, the freaking animation and the and the way it moved and everything. It was so incredible. Like, bro, the colors. The, the fluidity, the, uh, the animation style, and uh, also for me, the thing that really makes it even really good is the fact that the character designs 
are more like they're less detailed which allows for the animators to go all out and to imprint their own style yo you gotta see this season to believe it because bro quality even with everything going against it when everything going so bad in the in, in, in the background the animators really made it possible to look this good and that's literally something that we, we, sh we should be thankful for do not harass the animators because last time i saw this happen it was to aot like some some animators have been harassed for what i can remember i'm just like bro this season looks incredible how the fuck can you harass the animators that put the work into it don't blame them Blame the time that they had and blame the, the map of production, the, the production scale for this because bro You don't need to harass these motherfuckers, bro. That's not cool So the animation for this season was just incredible I thank you so much to the MAPPA staff and the animators for all of this because they made it even possible The voice acting of this season was just incredible like all of the and all of the voice actors and actresses went all out but i have to just have three people who really made it possible first of all is our mc yuji dadori who's voiced by junja enaki this guy he stole the season with that voice at them bro like the moments that the character suffers he nails it. The moment the character is feeling like very upset and really angry, he nails it. The moment that he feels like very cold and like very determined, he nails it. Like bro, those voice actors bro, Japanese voice actors never cease to amaze me. I'll tell you that for sure. Yo, also, I'm gonna talk about also the English stuff later. So, let's just go on with the Japanese voice actors first. First of all, I know I'm gonna talk about a lot of this on my highlights, but I don't care. Because you guys know that I'm a Sukuna motherfucking fan boy. Look at the boy right here. Yo, you know she's a Huawei, the voice actor of Sukuna. French kids are perfect. The malice, the veracity, the charisma, the chillness, everything about this, this guy. He did a great job with it. The evil laugh. Like, bro, that is literal. The best voice Sukuna could ever have. And number three for me, as much as I don't like the character because of how annoying he is, I gotta give it to Mahito. Nobunaga Shimasaki. This guy, for me, he is so close to Yuji in being the best one in the day. Because the insanity, the freaking mockery, the freaking like the scream that he does, bro, this guy nailed it. He made Mahito look more scary and more terrifying than the manga. Like, just by the voice alone, you know this guy is a menace. Not much Sukuna, but still, he was a menace. But also here, I'm gonna talk about now the English dub and my opinions about it. Look, the the MC for the BA for Yuji in the English dub is Adam MacArthur. He did a better job here than someone. But let me tell you this, there are some moments there that for me he needs to actually have more energy. Because I get that he that he's just like beginning in the anime industry, but he needs more energy like there are moments there for me that i just feel like he need to just let it out more to feel the moment a little more because like for example yuji yuji literally suffering after sukuna just took what he, as sukuna make the massacre on shibuya nothing touches freaking yuji knock his freaking voice out in there Adam MacArthur did a good job, but for me, he didn't do that enough, that enough of a job. But the other moments, he did great. 
he did really great. Also for Sukuna, Ray Chase. This man is such, he's loving this character. Like I can hear by the voice that he loves portraying this character. Because bro, he just gives Sukuna such a menacing and freaking just unhinged voice. The, the Japanese BA has a, like a more calm but still evil evil kind of like stuff. But bro, the English dub goes with the unhingedness by a mile. His evil lap too. And yo, you gotta give props to Ray Shades because Sukuna fans were eating good with the English dub. We're eating good. Yo, Mahito's voice actor too in the English dub. I forgot this guy's name. I'll, I'll, talk, I'll tell you about it later in the comments. He did a great job too. Like, there are moments there for me that I'm just like, bro, this guy is just great. Like, bro, the voice at the general was just incredible. Yo, massive props to the voice actors in the English dub and the Japanese. Because they really made it the best for this season. Now, let me highlight some of my favorite moments from JJK Season 2. First of all, obviously, without further ado, is episodes 15 to 17. Sukuna. Yo, my boy Lord Sukuna, my lord, my lord and saber, this man has stole the show for me. The moment he came in, he is literally the center of everything. Like, bro, he, yo, when he first came in, he cut freaking Yogo's arm off. And was like, yo, I'll give you one second, motherfucker. Move. Yo, he the scary aura around around him is just great. And yo, those little girls that, that ghetto like adopted, they got killed by Sukuna because they ordered him around. Like they made a mistake by just making this an order rather than, than a plea. And Sukuna shows Sukuna shows why he is different from, from the many characters, many villains in the series especially the inner demon stuff inner demons like kurama and um libe they're 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 very misunderstood and they're not actually evil people sukuna on the other hand he is evil itself he's literally evil like you cannot like make this guy go to your side he's his own side he will just play with everything he wants so he will kill whatever he wants he will just touch you with your life and he will touch Yuji and the other stuff around like that. He is evil. And that's why I love Sukuna so much because he really represents that inner demon trope pretty well and how good of a villain he is around. Yo, when he messed with Go with Yogo, bro, Yogo was there respected in first season by Goyo first and now by Sukuna and he got killed by him in the process. Like, Yogo put a good fight, but... Come on, let's admit it. Yo, this nigga literally just freaking demolished Yago. And the Mahora fight was great too. Even if the episode look undone, bro. Yo, Sukuna was just a menace. When he finished his freaking shit and just leave left freaking Yuji's body like like he gave control back to him. Just for, just for him to see that massacre that he did on Shibuya. Yo, that's just, that's just messed up. And Yuji's reaction, bro. Yeah, you're gonna feel bad for Yuji because Yuji goes through that freaking lot in this season. Like, bro, this guy goes through suffering. He look, he, he's, he finds out that Tsukuna massacre the whole Shibuya, like a huge part of it. Then he loses Nanami to, to Mahito and then Nobara to Mahito. This guy just went through hell for 15 minutes in gap on time. Like, bro, I'm looking at the people who are watching this episode and just looking at them being like, Yo, you fight back, boy, fight back. I just like, bro, this guy went through a lot of stuff in just 15 minutes. His mental state is not that strong. It, it is strong to really just record for him, but in that moment, yo, this guy could not. This guy was so broken. 
he's just 15 years old. This guy is just a child, my nigga. Like, bro, this guy literally went through hell in just a short time. But the best part is that you just change in the story too. Episode 21. The episode where is the and you speech. Another highlight for me. Because here Yuji assess the fact that he is like Mahito. He saves people without second thought. While Mahito kills people without second thought. And he's a cock the machine. The cock mentality starts this season. And Yuji in the voice acting in the freaking animation. The freaking the way the characters look. Bro, it looks incredible. He sh yo, Yuji was so cold and so badass that he shook Mahito up the moment that he, Mahito was defeated. Now, Mahito was running out of, of transfigured humans. And that speech that gave to Mahito, he made Mahito look like a dirty coward that he is. He made this boy run the hell away and just, just be like, yo, I wish Yuji could have been one to kill Mahito. But once again, Gege surprises you with not having the satisfaction and just having another way of just making money to pay but it's by being absorbed by Ken Yaku so for me it's like yo I I know that some people just like bro I wish Yuji got killed by me Yuji got the freaking kill on Mahito me too but Gege is like no nah, boy you're not getting that yo the way this season this season ended also in a way too a highlight too is Yuta Okoso's arrival. This man literally is just there to kill Yuji. I'm a manga reader, so I know what happens. But let me tell you, bro, you're gonna be surprised by what happens there. Like, do you think do you think Yuta's gonna kill Yuji? Do you think it's gonna happen? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I'm gonna tell you. So literally. I was gonna talk about the freaking premature death arc, but for me, I think I prefer it more to talk about it as an art review than the anime. But let me tell you this, a little, a little bit about it. Episode 4. When Goyo came back from the dead, from near dead, and unlocks his true power, the true power of, it, of, of Limitless, that was great too. Okay, before I finish this video, let me just talk about something that I forgot to talk about here because it's not a stand up for me because I have like mixed opinions about it. The music. Look, season one has season one had three composers. Hiroaki Sutsumi, Alisa, Alisa Okehosama, whatever. And I forgot the guy's name. Oh shit, I feel stupid. Oh shit. And Yoshimasa Terui. The last one became the main one for some two. He's the one that I like the least of all three of them. Some one. My favorite one was Hiroaki because he was the one for me that gave that some one music the vibe. But bro, they went with Terui. And for me, Terui is like, like a mixed bag. He has some bangers, but still he has. Things for me that I'm just like, nah, it doesn't fit. Like for me, my favorite OCD by him is the one that plays in episode four. Specifically when when Goji is doing the red on, on, on freaking Toji. That OC for me, I love it. It's so cool. Like for me, it's a missed pack for me that they always see in this season. But if you like it, that's fine too. So for me, that's all I got to say about this season. And that was my review for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. So tell me guys, what are your thoughts on Season 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen? Do you like it? Do you have something that you didn't like? Comments down below and let me know. So please do not forget to leave a like in this video, please. And subscribe to my channel for more One Piece, GJK, and other anime content. So this was Mercy from Beans for Productions, and I see you guys in the next video.